Hello and happy 1.8. Uh, this is Julie Crawford, principal over at El Dorado, and this is for um, task mission level 1.8, the fiscal, operational, and technological resources of the school are managed in a way that directly supports teachers. Uh, so this was kind of our task sheet for 1.8 that we um, uploaded as 1.8. 8A through C, and then this is obviously the video. Um, so I'm going to first start with our website um, and just go over kind of that raw data. Uh, and this we broke up into kind of three sections. So we wanted to look at the fiscal, operational, and technological because um, we felt like there was uh, lagging, lagging deficits in the technological, um, but we had pretty good stuff in the fiscal and operational. So when we're looking at our data, it all shows some really strong places on um, when digging deeper, 17.2 roughly made up of new staff members who have not experienced the budget process. So those were those I don't knows. Uh, we were trying to figure out where those 17.2, but 82.7 either agree or strongly agree uh, that the El Dorado develops, submits, and implements detailed budgets. El Dorado successfully um, accesses and leverages a variety of resources. We had some really good stuff on this, but it was an area to prove. El Dorado manages time effectively we um, to focus on instruction. That was that operational piece, uh, and that would, we had 100% of staff agree to that. Um, and when asked, staff and faculty um, have adequate materials. We had 82.7 agree or strongly agree, 13.8 neither agree nor disagree, and 3.4. We dived deeper into this. We actually have, um, what we've noticed is we have so many resources now coming. Um, we are adopting a new math curriculum, we have a new phonics curriculum, and we're adopting a new science curriculum, all for what's called the um, Colorado Academic 2020 Standards. Sorry about that. Uh, so we actually have a lot of resources allocated and that we're in the premise of or the precipice of learning uh, and we are actually having a lot of staff development and things like that. That is um, um, some of our teachers are struggling with the bandwidth of taking on so many new resources. So in diving in on the resource piece, it's actually the opposite. We have too much resource and hopefully we can build enough time through our PLCs uh, to work in a lot of strong professional development. All right, um, sorry. And then here were some examples of some leading indicators too. So an area that potentially when asked, uh, faculty and staff report they have adequate time to teach. We had 69% agree or strongly agree, 20% neither disagree or agree, and 10.3% disagree. Students stated the following, um, uh, that they feel strongly or strongly agree that they have enough time to learn, and then community um, put either I don't know, but 74% either strongly agree or agree. Um, and then El Dorado appropriately directs the use of technology to improve teaching and learning. Uh, we had uh, staff stated 76% uh, staff agree, um, and then um, uh, this was an area to potentially improve. So El Dorado also provides training for instructional technology teachers are expected, and so we did have another area for improve. So our focus on, this, on these three were fiscal was mostly an area to prove, operational an area to prove, and technological an area to improve. And so that's where we looked at through our 1.8. Here's our evidence on um, those areas to prove. Um, right here is our 2021 budget proposal. This was shared with SAC in a screencast video just because we had a snow day that day. Um, and then our also it was a staff and a and a um, same pretty much same budget staff and our SAC community. So we go through our agenda. We go through um, staff, parent, and budget priorities. We have sent out an earlier survey as far as our budget priorities, both staff and both students. So here's for our 2020, and we can see ranked mostly what oh, they want class sizes, then assistant principal, reading intervention, and things like that. That's for staff and our EE community survey for 2021, class sizes, and then so on and so on. So that helps us guide our, our priorities when building the budget. Um, and that's what we put primarily here. And so then we go over objectives, potential pitfalls, um, and then we look at the actual class sizes. So 
next year uh, is going to be really, really nice. Our class sizes are 16 per class in first kindergarten, first grade is 8, 19, second grade is 21, third grade is 20, fourth grade is 22, sixth grade is 21, and then we have a hot pocket right here in fifth grade at 28 students. We are closely monitoring that to see if we should add a third section right now. It's just budget dependent and um, enrollment dependent. Uh, so that's what that looks like. And then we go through what is the differences between 2019 and 2020. Um, and then our El Dorado budget moving, moving forward, what this looks like. Um, and then we ask for highly impacted money. How does this impact our staff, our students, our community, and all of El Dorado? And then next steps. We're going to be hiring for a first grade position and a fourth or sixth grade position. And then um, we have two retirements. So we were just discussing those hiring pieces. And then any money we would like to ask for what's called highly impacted funding. Uh, so that's what we did um, in the month of January. Our budget it was due February 14th. Uh, and then it's finalized this week. And so everything got finalized as far as our budget goes. Uh, and our staff was really, really happy with our budget. These are some other things, our community budget, pretty much the same thing, just with maybe a little bit more of a community lens and then more of a staff lens. Down here, this just shows more of those, um, still that budget uh, process and then potentially those operational pieces. So if you see in here, here's fiscal responsibilities and then here is those operational pieces and our operational and then here's some technological. So, I'm going to scroll back up here. Um, these are things like our student placement process, class placement process, strategic planning grant, um, uh, what we strategic planning template, our budget for PTO and SAC, and then um, and then that's for our fiscal. For operational, this is our master schedule. This is our 1920. We are actually right in the throes of building our 2021 schedule. That is a lot of input from staff, from um, parents, from students. In fact, so here's our budget, I mean our time here right now. So lunch is 1110, let's say to 1130 in first grade and 1130 to 1150. And so then, so then, what the nice thing was, um, oops, wrong one. Um, when we are building our master calendar for the next year, we did those suggestion boxes and did those listening tours. Uh, and the number one thing all students desperately wanted was a five minute extra lunch time. And so here, you can tell right now we're in the stages of deciding our master schedule for next year and then we have the following we have um, instead of a 40 minute lunch time we have a 23 22 minute lunch over here 23 22 ea schedule 25 minute lunch with a 20 minute recess in here um, and then here's with like a 50 minute lunch recess and all of the pros and cons with that all the pros and cons with this uh, but directly that's um, great from our listening tours and from our um, from our feedback is that we're going to be able to give students what they want which is an extra long or an extra five minutes to ten minutes of lunch recess so that is really really nice um, that came from our suggestion boxes but it also impacted our schedule for next year and things like that so that's on that operational piece um, and then on our technological responsibilities uh, we this is our tech budget so this is our planning consideration uh, this is our planning budget right here so this is how we decide the funding and what that looks like we have what's called a CRT which is um, just basically a tech person uh, that helps navigate all of this uh, and then here's the funding available for the tech rotation plan. This is a four-year plan that our district helps um, helps us do, plus money from PTO. We get roughly about $34,000 a year. Um, and then uh, with that much money from the district in order to, to refresh technology. So that is really nice. So here's all of our considerations um, that we've done. So our, our instructional considerations, our goals for technology integration, one and one Chromebooks for third through sixth, um, what are our building's curtain um, integration challenges, teacher staff development and risk takers with tech, uh, things like that. So then we go through and um, we build all those planning considerations around our tech. Uh, so that's really nice for tech 
budget, and these are our budget restraints for as far as our tech. So aging devices and refresh opportunities to sustain um, uh, sustainable technology integration, what that looks like. Uh, and then we have um, just some technological pieces that we've brought to our classrooms. So we call it heat in the classroom. Um, we utilize this, but we're kind of shifting away from this. Um, this is where it's heat, for H for higher order thinking, E for engaged learning, um, A for um, authentic connections, and then T for that technology piece. Uh, and then this, we had Seesaw. Um, this is something we did Google Classroom and Seesaw. Uh, but one thing that came out of that improve area was when we provide um, when we provide professional development, let's do it through a lens of continual um, learning when it comes to tech. So if you look over, we just had our professional development day on February 14th, and we were very specific on saying this was one of the needs uh, that you guys had stated, and so what we're going to do is typically do our professional development. Um, and so this was our Friday agenda. So we had a morning with our district people and in the afternoon we worked on PLC work and then what's called CCIRA share shop. So our teachers brought back all the things that they learned at this um, reading conference. Um, but then we wanted to do it through the lens of different tech features. So um, I'm gonna go through and just see, we did what's called Pear Deck. That's an internet interactive slideshow. Um, so we we taught them fun ways we did valentine stuff um, but then we showed them really fun ways to use um, use pear deck with their students so that is was really really fun and then we went to said we put, said please go to flipgrid put in this flip code and then we did plc work using um, flipgrid which has been really really great and then um, we did where have you been and we did a thing called game kit or GIM kit, and that was kind of like a Kahoot if you're not aware. Uh, it was just another way to offer a fun opportunity um, to work on our PLC stuff. So just having three new tech tools, and then we had said that that would be a continual thing. Our teachers loved it. The feedback was really great. Uh, we had several teachers. So we had um, February 14th was a Friday, and then we didn't come back to school till that Monday or Tuesday. And so then um, they we saw it right away being used. Flipgrid, Pear Deck, the GIM kit, right away with our teachers on Tuesday. Um, so that is really, really good. Um, and so these are areas of, these are what we put in those tasks 1.8 A, B, and C. Um, and then we also put in our, that Google presentation, this February 14th one. Um, and then I've already gone through the data with that. Um, I'm just trying to make sure I have everything covered. So I'm just gonna go back to our website really quick. Um, see if there's anything else. We have our budget, some operational things. Um, and then our technological responsibilities. I would say our tech pieces are still a work in prog progress. The majority of our teachers are more veteran teachers where they get a little nervous with technology. Um, and we did a, a meeting the other day on the adverse effects of technology, just kind of keeping our passwords protected and not having, um, not opening up certain links when you get a random email, those type of things. Uh, so just helping them through those stages. And the, I will say that risk taking is definitely something um, that we're gonna keep on going when it definitely when it comes to technology. So that is about it for the 1.8. I look forward to your feedback and have a great day.